If it's happening in the Coachella Valley, it's front and center now. I love your show. I, I just love it. He calls it as he sees it. So my daughter turned me on to you, and you're awesome. Live from the Palm Springs iHub. You know, as a businessman, I spend my entire day, I work hard, for the, you know, make money for my family. So I don't have the time to invest and to know what's going on. You know, and that's why I listen to your show because you tell it exactly the way it is. This is the Russ Betts Show on iHub Radio. All right, welcome to the Russ Betts Show here, coming to you live from beautiful downtown Palm Springs. You know, it's not every day we make it to 93 years old. In fact, most of us aren't going to see that day. But, Mom, happy birthday! Uh, As soon as the show's over, your party begins. Uh, We'll be out there, friends and family gathering to wish mom a happy 93 years old. And she tells it, 93 years old ain't uh, ain't what it's all cracked up to be. But anyhow, we'll, uh, you know, she's fine. She gets along just fine. She, uh, I'm very blessed. Uh, I could tell you lots and lots of stories about mom over 93 years, but we're going to get on to some other news. Now, on Friday at about, what, 3 p.m., news outlets across Southern California were abuzz with word that Governor Newsom had agreed to let restaurants in Riverside County open for dine-in services and that other businesses that had been closed could also open for their, well, where they had been previously restricted to curbside service. And it was an explosion on this story. On this story, I mean, bam! The governor governor says restaurants can open, and small shops can open, and businesses can open, and you know, every news story out there was about that here in the in the uh, Southern California region. We had supervisors making press releases as they should. They worked really, really hard to get the governor to uh, allow Riverside County to open, to get his ear, and make sure that that happened and that it could be done safely. And I'm I'm sure all of the supervisors, Riverside County supervisors, had some sort of announcement. And I saw the statement of District 2 Supervisor Karen Spiegel and 4th District Supervisor and Board Chair Manny Perez, uh, both heralding it as a good day. And there must have been a dozen council members also putting out statements that I saw. And while it seemed a bit redundant, I decided, well, heck, you know, I'm going to post something myself. Maybe there's somebody that hasn't seen it. And, uh, you know, for those of you new to the show, I I do the show to keep you informed, but my day job is as a council member in the city of Desert Hot Springs. So, you know, sometimes I feel obligated to let people know, hey, uh, here's what's going on, which is what I did on Friday. So my contribution to the commotion was simply to share one of the news articles and, you know, add into the the copy uh, and the supplies to our city, too. I mean, it's big news when restaurants that are hanging on by a financial thread after months of being closed can finally reopen. Or when a shopkeeper who's been sitting there and watching all the big box stores get all the business is finally told, you know what, you can let people into your your store again, you can start selling. I mean, that's big news. And, of course, there's some that are not happy with the opening. Um, I mean, you can see the danger of this virus and... Some think it's best just to keep things shut down longer. And then the flip side of that is there's a whole lot of death that comes with the poverty that's going to ensue if this goes on much longer. So anyhow, when you see how quickly a virus like this can strike, I certainly can't fault anybody who takes the position we need to be careful. But the orders don't say, the governor's orders don't say, just flip open your, you know, flip on your open sign and and throw open your doors. That's not what he said. And I'm guessing everybody knows this. I mean, even those that don't think restaurants should be open know that they will be opening with the social distancing and other safety guidelines we've all become accustomed to. Does anybody think that's not going to happen? I mean, you would have to be galactically brain dead To think Governor Newsom would tell Riverside County restaurants and retail businesses, yeah, just go ahead, just open your doors, no protocols needed, Uh, just everybody's just, you know, open up. I mean, everybody gets that's not the case. Well, not everybody. So, so like I mentioned, I posted this, and in response to my post informing anyone that had not yet heard yet that restaurants and stores can open, I, I got a text. And I'm going to paraphrase, but it basically went like this. 
I can't believe you announced restaurants and stores are open without mentioning that they have to follow protocols. You know, I, I guess for some people, everything must be spelled out. You ever seen those warning labels out there that just make you scratch your head and think, is there anybody really that dumb? You know, there's a, there's a label that says, may cause drowsiness. Well, that's on Nitol sleeping pills, duh. Or do not use while sleeping, and that's on Vidal Sassoon hair dryer. Uh, I guess, you know, I, I haven't figured that one out yet. Or the, uh, this, this vanishing fabric marker should not be used as a writing instrument for signing checks or any legal documents. And that's on a product that uh, is a vanishing fabric marker. <laughs> or this product not intended for use as a dental drill, which is a Dremel rotary tool, if those of you who know what that is. But, you know, the reason we make fun of the dumb labels is because we can't believe people are really that stupid. You know, I get somebody telling me, well, you need to be sure you mention the protocols. Anyhow, have you seen those protocols? Wow, I'm holding the regulations here in my hand, and this is a really thick uh, document. Um, it, it's, it's uh, well, I'll read you the title. COVID-19 Industry Guidant, Guidance Dine-In Restaurants. And then there's another one. COVID-19 industry guidance, shopping malls, destination shopping centers, strip outlet malls, and swap meets. And there's another one for offices, and there's another one for everything else you can possibly imagine. And these are put out by the California Department of Public Health and Cal OSHA, which is the California version of the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. Now, I'm going to just take a minute here to, to let you know what what I'm looking at when I go through these regulations, and I'm going to go through them quickly. I'm not going to go through much. I'll give you a flavor for what's being looked at. But in this world, if you run a factory, there's something called lockout tagout. It's, it's, a, you know, it's a lockout tagout program. And so I'm running my factory. I got all kinds of additional equipment and 100 people out on the shop floor. And OSHA plays a surprise visit, and they come into my office, and I say, sit down, and they weren't real comfortable with the invitation because they were there to, to inspect. I said, that's okay, fine. And they said, well, can we see your lockout tagout program? This was back in the 80s. And I said, uh, my lockout tagout what? They said, well, you don't know what your lockout tagout program is? I says, well, no, I don't think I ever heard of that one. And uh, we're, you know, we're a small business. We got five people in the office and 100 employees out in production. And um, so they said, well, well, you know, this could be serious, but let's go take a look at your factory floor. So we're going out on the factory floor, and I had a uh, maintenance guy, Merle, who he'd been around for a while in industrial settings, and maybe this guy could smell an OSHA inspector a mile away, but for whatever reason, Merle happened to be over by the electrical panel. And right when we stepped up to that electrical panel, Merle throws the switch to the electrical panel, shutting off all power to all equipment, proceeds to put a lock into the electrical panel, take the key, put it in his pocket, and go over and work on the uh, can closing equipment, the machine, which is a pretty serious machine. I mean, I think it started up while his arms were in there. They're going to grind him up. So the, the OSHA guy says, well, what's that? He says, what do you mean, what's that? He says, well, I thought you said you didn't have a lockout tagout program. And I said, well, I don't know what you call it, but, you know, I don't want Merle's arms to get ground up in that machine if, uh, you know, somebody should accidentally go and turn on the power. And he says, well, how many keys are there? There's just one. I mean, you want somebody else with a key to go over there. So anyhow, the, 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 the purpose in telling you all that is that I find out that after all this is that 80% of OSHA violations are for paperwork only infractions, meaning, well, you didn't have your written lockout tagout plan in your filing cabinet. You can be doing everything else in the factory floor perfectly safe. And by the way, I passed that inspection. Um, but, uh, you know, if you don't have the written plan in place, well, then you're in trouble. So I'm looking at these regulations for restaurants, and I'm thumbing through figuring out, well, what am I going to tell you about? And it says the first item on the list is workplace safety plan, workplace-specific plan. And the instructions to the restaurateur are establish a written worksite specific COVID-19 prevention plan at every location, perform a comprehensive risk assessment of all work areas, and designate a person at each establishment 
to implement the plan. Now, when we put all this through, basically, they're, they're and, and then it says train and communicate with employees and employee representatives about the plan. So basically, you're talking about an industrial setting, the hazard management information system that was put in place in factories back in the 80s. And you had to go through a huge training process. And, you know, kudos to um, one of the workers on the factory for Joyce. I forget her last name, but I'll never forget her. Joyce, I could see the OSHA guy going over to her, and he wants to test her to see if she knows about this hazard management information system. And we'd put everybody through classes and took it very seriously. And... Uh, she says, oh, yeah, yeah, she grabs and pulls them by the shirt sleeve. Come on over here. Look, there's this book that lists all the materials. He's quizzing her. And he goes, wow, you really trained your employees well. And he, he wanted to get away from her. She went, no, no, I'm going to tell you how well we know this. We took this very seriously. And he went and asked a couple other people, and they all passed. So, anyhow, we passed with flying colors. Well, I'm familiar with all that. I don't know how many restaurants are familiar with putting in a written plan like this, but this has got Cal Osha's name on it. And it sure looks like something OSHA would require, because that's who required it of me. And so now you got a bunch of restaurants out there. It's not just a matter of flipping the open sign. they got a whole bunch of work to do. And in addition to putting in a written plan, which, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm just imagining uh, an OSHA inspector or somebody from the California Department of Public Health comes out and says, Hi, uh, show me your written COVID plan. Maybe some restaurant owner will go on my written what? Well, let me, let me see. Well, you know, this could be serious. Let's go take a look around your restaurant. And going and taking a look around the restaurant, you find out that, well, they've met every guideline in the plan because they went through the rest of this manual and item by item and put it in place. But they're probably not realizing that 80% of all violations are paperwork-only violations at OSHA, and thus uh, they're going to get a fine because they won't be able to pull out of a filing cabinet. So restaurant owners, if you're listening, this isn't, uh, this isn't easy stuff. Okay, you, you've got some work to do. Now, I know a restaurant in our city who, um, they, they took note. And, uh, in fact, they, uh, they wanted to let everybody know that they wanted to open. I mean, they'd been closed. They want to open. But they wrote a note to all of their customers, letting them know, Hello, friends and family, sorry for the late update. We're working all afternoon to get everything ready to start tomorrow. I'm glad to inform you we'll be opening to dine starting this morning. Uh, this is something to new to us, and uh, you know we're encourage everyone dining to you know to take these orders seriously, and uh, you know we'll give you instructions when you get here. And basically, what they're saying is, we just read through all these OSHA regulations, and uh, we're working like heck to to get all this put in place. This is something we've never seen before. And uh, this is now part of regular operation. Okay. This is Russ Betts on iHub Radio. Lots more ahead. We'll be back. Live from Palm Springs. Hey, everyone, listen to this, please. Ten years ago, you know, this was a thriving, booming economy, but we're not going to that extent. This thing isn't a total crash. I want to tell you, you got the radio voice, my friend. This is The Russ Betts Show. Wow, that's really honorable. Now, here's Russ Betts on iHub Radio. Okay, I don't want to give you the impression that I get irritated by every call or text that I get from uh, constituents. Actually, they're all very helpful. I love them. I'm going to go over a couple of those during the show just to give you a taste of what, uh, what a council member's uh, faces, uh, you know, when they hear from the public. Uh, that's what we do here on the Russ Bed Show. We like to pull back the curtain on local government and let you know what we see from, from our side of the dais. Um, it wasn't long ago I sat out in the audience watching council members reading their faces and... Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff you don't know, and well, we're going to let you know. Uh, anyhow, so we're talking about, uh, brings me to all this, is we're talking about a, a text I got over the weekend by somebody who was upset that I posted a news story that was all over the world. Everybody had that story. I mean, you couldn't do a Google search without finding it in every single listing and that came up. And I posted it, reposted it, and said, hey, by the way, in case you didn't know, this applies to our city also. And I got taken to task because I didn't put in, include in the post, all the Cal OSHA protocols. 
And I go, you know, sometimes you get these calls and, you know, you, you try and be nice to people. And I, you know, I just I don't want you to think this is the norm. I mean, you know, look, as council members, you get calls that are hostile. That's our nature of our of our system of government. I mean, thank you, Ben Franklin, for being so tough on King George and setting in a system in place where we always take elected officials to task. That's an important part of the job, and it is to be expected. But once in a while, very rarely, you'll get something that borders on galactically stupid when somebody sits there and tells you, hi, by the way, uh, what everybody else knows. Oh, you didn't mention in your post that uh, there's these rules from Cal OSHA and uh, from... uh, from uh, the California Department of Public Health. All right, so, you know, I mean, how much more do you want me to bore you with all these regulations? And uh, so, anyhow, I, I, I'm just, you know, restaurateurs, it's obvious they're not just going to throw open their doors. And so we're looking at this thing, at these guidelines by Cal Ocean Department of Public Health for the state, and, and here's the, the main part. Adhere to these guidelines. Failure to do so may cause operations to be temporarily closed or limited. So basically, what you have is restaurateurs are out there going, wow, I can't believe it. It's been so long, our business, even though we've had pickup, our business is 20% of what we were looking at before, if that. We lost thousands of dollars on inventory we had to throw out uh, because, you know, you got food here, you can't return it, and if nobody's here eating it... uh, and people just don't realize how much of an impact this has been on restaurants. And, and if any of them survive, it'll be a miracle. By the way, if you've got a local restaurant that's open for dining um, and you are comfortable going and dining in, follow all these protocols, pay attention to what they're telling you to do, bear with them, but by all means, go support them. It's a really important time to go support your local restaurants. And if you're not comfortable going in and dining in, they're all doing takeout. And they'll be more than happy to have your business. I've done it a few times, and it, you know, it's, it's really nice. To, it's better to dine in. It's a much nicer experience. Anyhow, but know that they're going to be under threat of being closed again. They're going to be following these guidelines, and some of this is going to be onerous. But, uh, you know, it gets into the importance of frequent hand washing, face coverings, uh, uh, provide a temperature. Here, here's one. Provide temperature and or symptom screenings for all workers. So that means when a worker comes into the workplace, you have to have a separate place set up to do this. And then there's a protocol for the person who's doing the screening to make sure that they maintain a proper distance and how they're supposed to do that. Here's one that just baffles me. Encourage workers who are sick to stay at home. You know, in this environment, you talk about galactically... You know, <laughs> If somebody shows up for work six and you haven't, you know, if you and an employer have not communicated to an employee, if you're sick, don't come in. If you have, you heard, you know, like people a little nervous. I mean, I mean, I know there's employers out there that failed to adequately inform their employees. If you're sick, don't come in to work. And I mean, now you talk about galactically stupid. That would be it. All right. But I, I know there's employers out there that have had a worker come in that was sick and it resulted in entire departments or entire businesses having to say, wow, everybody stay home 14 days of quarantine because the message wasn't, well, anyhow, Cal OSHA has taken the time to put that in here to make sure anybody that doesn't get that one puts in encourage workers who are sick to stay home. And um, what else? Um, so must have signage so the customers understand what's going on. And then they have cleaning and disinfecting protocols. You can get all this online if you want to go look it up. Just go search COVID-19 industry guidance, uh, Cal OSHA, and that, that'll all come up. It's a big, long list. I've been telling you, it's 12 pages. 12? How many pages? 8, 9, 10, yeah. And 12 pages of, and it's all almost, you know, it's all single-spaced, bullet-pointed. Um... It's a lot. It's a lot to get a business back open. Uh, I'm not going to go into any more of this. It's just too long a list, but I will let you know. It's not just for the restaurants. There's a whole other one for shopping malls, offices, uh, strip mall outlets. And it all covers about the same thing. All right, we're going to get on to some other subjects. There's more to talk about. We're going to get you some updates on the uh, city budgets around the Coachella Valley. Not all of them, but a couple of them. And with an update on Palm Springs, uh, 
Wow, is Palm Springs lucky to have David Reddy as their city manager. I'm going to tell you, I watched that meeting and I was way impressed. All right, we'll give you those details in just a bit. This is Russ Betts on iHub Radio. Glad to have you with us here. And we continue. <laughs> <laughs> 